at the end of the video, I want to tell you guys that I'm going to be leaving in the description box a link to a really cool music video by Travis Scott. Maybe some of you guys will be interested. I just thought maybe I'd share that with you. Um, it's really, really cool. So anyways, um, to start off this trick, let's say we have the spectator pick a number 10 through 20. Um, and let's say they wanted to pick a number like 15. So they could have picked any number they wanted to. They picked 15, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So uh, we're going to take 1 and 5, okay, the numbers that are involved in 15, and we're going to add those together to get 6. So uh, this number would have been different if you would have picked a different number from the beginning. So like I said, this is completely random. And let's say we have uh, the sum of 1 and 5. So we have 1, 2, 3. Four, five, and the sixth card here. As we can see, we have the ace of spades. And I'm going to go ahead over to the box on the right. We have a prediction, and let's open it up. And you guys can see we have the ace of spades. So this is the video. This is the trick, guys. And if you want to do it, don't forget to stick around for the tutorial. All right. So all you have to do in order to do this trick is just get I guess like a sheet of paper or something to write a prediction in fold that up whatever card you want you can write the name of it you're gonna fold that up and save that for later so let's say you stick the box off to the side the next thing you do is you take the card that you are going to force here in this case I just put the ace of spades and you're going to put that tenth from the top so you stick this here and then you take nine cards so here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine and you stick this packet on top and that is going to be the setup for the trick so then from here what you want to do is you can do a couple of fake cuts or something I'm gonna leave the link so you guys can learn that and then I guess you can also take the cards and just kind of break it off into groups whatever you want to do in order to not mix up the deck but kind of give it the illusion that the cards are indeed getting mixed up you're gonna do that and then you can go up to the spectator and tell them and you kind of casually just say alright so I'm gonna have you pick a number um, any number, let's say between like 10 and 20. So you kind of make it casual so it's not like you're only giving them the option to go from 10 and 20. Um, so let's say they were to pick any number between 10 and 20. Let's say they picked a number like 13. What you're going to do is you're going to count out 13 cards. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And now at this point, you are set up for the trick and all you have to do is add 1 and 3 to get four so like I said this would this would work uh, with any of the numbers between 10 and 20 and at this point you tell the spectators as well that they could have picked any number and the sum would have been different for those numbers so from uh, number 13 they're going to be at number four so you go one two three and the fourth card here is going to be the forced card and then you open up the box and show them the prediction so this is the trick guys I hope you guys like it and as always, thanks for watching. And don't forget to stick around. Uh, I mean, click on the link in the description if you guys are interested. And let me know how you guys liked it. So now for real, I uh, hope you guys liked the video. And as always, thanks for watching. Yeah, I'm going to be giving a quick shout out to MLT Card Tricks. If you guys like my channel, you guys will like his. So make sure... Uh, stick around for the video. I'm going to be showing you. Um, he's going to be featured here on my channel. You guys can watch the video and then go back. Make sure to subscribe to him. Anyways, guys, I'll let him take it from here. And here is the video. What's up, guys? MLT Tricks here. And first of all, I want to give a big thank you to Hester for letting me be featured on his channel. And if you guys like what you see in this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I post card trick performances and tutorials like this one, and also explanation videos for all the magic acts on America's Got Talent. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this trick. So for this trick, I'm going to be using the two red queens, the Queen of Hearts and the Queen of Diamonds. I'm going to go ahead and set them off to the side, because we don't need them quite yet. And at this point, if you were here, you would select any card from the deck. So let's just say you choose this one right here. This is a completely free selection. In this case, you chose the uh, three of three of hearts. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take your card. I'm going to place it face down between the two queens. And at this point, I'm just going to give the deck a couple of cuts, just like this. I'm going to give it uh, one more cut and quick riffle shuffle. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the rest of the deck off to the side and come back to your card and the two red queens. So all, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna square them up. Um, go ahead and give them a quick spin. And if I snap my fingers, you'll actually see your card vanish from in between the two red queens, just like so. And the rest of the deck has been in your sight the entire time. So very slowly, I'm gonna spread out the cards face down. You know, you'll see all the cards are face down, except one face up card, which should be your card, the three of hearts. So this is the trick, guys. I hope you liked it. And if you wanna learn how to do it, go ahead and stick around for the tutorial. Okay, I really hope you guys like that card trick. It has a great effect on the spectator. And all you're gonna need in order to perform this trick is a double-backed card and some double-sided tape. So really quickly for the double-backed card, um, some decks come with one, or and if your deck doesn't come with one, all you need to make one is like, you can take the two jokers from the deck, place some double-sided tape around the edges of it, the one joker, and then just place the other joker right on top of it, and you have your own double-backed card. So that works just fine. And now I'm, I'm going to talk about the double-sided tape in this trick. So first of all, you're gonna wanna take um, two face cards from the deck. It doesn't, you, doesn't have to be the queens, but two face cards with the same color. And you're gonna place a strip of double-sided tape right in the middle of the back of the one, one of the face cards. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the light so you guys can see. You can see there's a strip of double-sided tape, just a pretty small strip right on the middle of the back of this queen. So now for the setup, you're going to place the first, um, you're gonna place the uh, double back card right on top of the deck. And then you're gonna place the one face card without the double sided tape right on top of the double back card. And then you're gonna place the face card with the double sided tape on top of that. So really quickly, it should go, the order should go um, double back card, face card without the double sided tape on top of that and then card, face card with a double-sided tape on top of all of that. So this is the setup, it's quite simple. And from here, you're going to explain to your spectator that you're going to be using the two red queens for this trick or whatever two face cards you're using. So all you're doing there is just um, taking off the top card with the double-sided tape, flipping it over, and then just using it to turn over the second uh, face card. So you're gonna explain to your spectator that you're going, not going to be using these right away, so you can just go ahead and place those off to the side, just like this, and tell them you're going to use that uh, in the, later in the trick. So at this point, you can go ahead and have the spectator just choose any card from the middle of the deck. Make sure they don't choose the top card. Most spectators won't, but just make sure they don't or else the trick won't work. So let's just say they can have free selections. Let's just say they choose this card. You go ahead and have them look at it, and you're gonna want to see it too. So in this case, they chose the 10 of hearts. So as they're kind of looking at their card, you're kind of misdirecting them. We're going to be want to catch a pinky break under the double back card, which is the top card. So what you're doing there is you're just going to slide it off with your thumb, pull it back, and get a small pinky break like this under the double back card. So then, uh, as you're kind of talking to the spectator, you're, you're going to put it, um, put their card right on top of the double back card. Turn over the double packet as one. As you're saying this, you're just going to say, "Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put your card right in the middle of the two queens." And what you did there. You turned over the double packet and you're just gonna slide off the double backed card. So really quickly again, you have a pinky break under the double back card, you have their card, you put it on top, turn over the double packet, just like this, slide it off, you're sliding off the double back card, and you're gonna go ahead and put it right between the two queens. At this point, they think their card is right here. In reality, it's right back on top of the deck. So from here, you need to bring their card the 10 of hearts to the bottom of the deck. So the way to do that is you're gonna get a thumb break under their card, top card, and bring, uh, take about half of the cards from the bottom of the deck and just turn, bring those to the top face up. So what you're doing there is you're just explaining to your spectator that you're, gonna, you're cutting the cards. So when you do that, make sure you maintain that thumb break. You can see here between the two packets. And from here, bring all the cards from the bottom of that break same thing, you're gonna bring those to the top face up, just like that. So what you've done there is you, is you have turned all of the cards face up, except the bottom card, 
which is their card. So at this point, you're gonna explain to your spectator that you're gonna do one more cut. So you're gonna sw swing cut about half of the deck into your other hand, and then you're just gonna place the rest of the cards right on top of that. So what you're doing there is you're placing their, you're making their card now the only uh, face down card in the entire deck, out of the deck. So once you've done that, you're just gonna set the deck, rest of the deck off to the side and tell your spectator that you're gonna come back to the um, packet of three with the two queens and they think, again, this is their card, but it's really the double backed card. So you're just gonna tell your spectator that you're gonna square up this pack of three, just like so. And then what you're doing now from here, you're gonna wanna pinch this the group packet of three, just like this. So what you're doing there is you're allowing the double side double backed card to stick to the back of the queen of hearts thanks to the double sided tape. So you're, you're just gonna explain your spectator, you can do whatever you want, you can just, as long as you're pinching it, just do a couple spins, snap your fingers, and then you're gonna reveal to the spectator that their card actually vanished um, from this pack of three. But in reality, it's just taped, stuck to the back of the uh, Queen of Hearts because of the double-sided tape. So this part of the trick, it's really powerful because it really makes the spectator believe that their card had really actually disappeared. And if you can just kind of um, turn over the cards like this and show them that their card really is gone. And as long as the corners are square, um, they won't notice that there's a card stuck to the back of the one of the face cards. So from here, you're just gonna go ahead and um, place the two cards down, the two uh, face cards. At this point, the spectator is really blown away, and you can make the point to the spectator that um, this, the rest of the deck has been in their sight the entire time, and you haven't touched it or anything. You're gonna go really slow at this part, and you're gonna uh, explain to the uh, spectator that you're going to spread out the cards face down. And all you're doing there is you're just spreading out the cards, and then you're going to show them that all the cards are face down, except one card, which is their card. So at this point, they really will believe that their card has suddenly just vanished from uh, the pack of three, and, and then somehow became the only face up card in the entire deck. Okay, that is gonna conclude the performance and tutorial for this really cool teleportation card trick. I hope this trick works out for you guys. And again, a big thank you to Hester for letting me be featured on his channel. I hope to see all of you back at my channel, and thank you guys for watching. Okay, so today I'm gonna be doing things a little bit different. Um, I actually have a special guest on the show, so uh, make sure you guys stick around, watch his performance, his tutorial. Um, the trick he's gonna show you is gonna absolutely blow you guys away. Um, I'm really happy to have him on my channel, and please, guys, make sure you check him out and make sure to subscribe as well. And uh, anyways, guys, here is the video. Hi, everyone. I'm Khan from the channel Khan Tricks. And today, I'm guest on this great channel to teach you a very visual and easy to perform triumph effect that most of you probably haven't seen before. If you like the video, let us know with a thumbs up. And also, feel free to check out my videos on my channel Khan Tricks. And if you like them, please go ahead and leave a subscription on my channel for completely free, of course. That's been said, let's get started with the performance of this trick. For my next trick, I need you to pick any card from the center of the pack, let's say the 10 of clubs. Once you have signed the card if you want to, and after it has been memorized, we're gonna take it and place it into the middle of the pack, just like so. Now at this point, any magician could go through the pack and find your selection, and it would be a completely fine effect. However, I would like to go one step further and do something that many magicians do not like to attempt. It is creating a chaos by shuffling the card, facing up into facing down, just like so. No sneaky moves whatsoever as I push them in and give them one cut like so. And if, of course, if the spectator wants to, he can cut the cards too, like so. Now I would like to prove one more time the whole pack is 
shuffled, we have here facing down, facing down, facing up, facing down cards. It's all different. Watch this now. I'm very relaxed because I know you have never seen a trick as clean as this. Yeah? All the cards turn back facing down, except for one card in the center, which I'm sure is yours. The Ten of Clubs. So, here is the explanation for the effect. Now, this trick does use gimmicks, and the gimmicks are probably gimmicks that you probably have at home, lying around somewhere, and you don't really have the right use for them. And these are basically gimmicks I use very often, which are double back cards. To be more precise, you have 26 double back cards, and the remaining cards here, 26 of them, are randomly selected cards, so you have blacks, red, black reds, and so on. Okay, and your setup is very simple. The real cards, the facing with the faces, go on top of the double back cards. That's it. Now you can start the effect. Now to start off, you have the spectator select the card. As you spread the pack very slowly, so they select a card from the top half. Okay, you don't want them to pick a double back card. Okay, so spread them very slowly. As they touch one card, let's say this one the nine of spades. You show it to the spectator, it can really be signed by the spectators, and once the spectator has done so, you are gonna lose it in the bottom half of the pack, meaning you want to lose the card amongst these facing down ones, okay? Amongst the double backed cards, okay? And once you're in this position, you start, you start with your story. You say that you're not a usual magician, and as you're saying so, you are going to lift up at the natural break here, separating the real cards from the double backed cards, and say that you would like to shuffle the cards facing down into facing up. As you're seeing this, you turn around the real pack, spread them to show it's really facing down into facing up, and give them a shuffle. Okay? Notice I like to shuffle the facing up ones into the facing down ones, so there is one facing down card on top. Okay? Show one last time, they really go into each other and square them up. Okay? Now from this side, the pack looks very shuffled. When you turn it around, however, all the cards are facing down as you can see, except for one card in the middle that is their selection. Of course, you don't want to reveal that very quickly, okay? At this point, now, of course, you could spread the pack to show there are really cards facing up, facing down, facing down, facing down, facing up, like so. So they are shuffled. However, I believe this is too clean, okay? And especially when I perform to magicians, the display I like to show is this, by riffling the cards, okay? So when you do this, they think that the secret is right here, okay? Riffling the cards, so there might be some sleight of hand going on. Because if you just do this, in my opinion, it is too clean, so the spectator might figure out what is going on, okay? You just want to keep the attention here while riffling the cards. Once you have done so, you can lift up at the cards, show that there are double back, like face back to back cards, face backs, Okay, facing up, facing down, and then, as you're showing this, turn around the pack. That's a secret move, which you do very openly. And then show one more time, facing up, facing up, facing down, facing up, and set them on the table. Even though you just revealed their card already, the Nine of Spades. Does not matter. Now you stay here, very calm as in my performance, and say, watch this, I'm gonna turn around all the cards facing down, except for one card. That could be one plot you could use, or you can say, I'm gonna find your card in a special way. Watch this. Without mentioning that all the cards will reverse, snap your fingers and reveal all the cards facing down, except for one card in the center, the nine of spades. And at this point, you are done. You could just take the pack, square them up, put them into the card case, 
and move on or do just a deck switch and perform a usual effect. The, set, uh, the reset of this trick takes of course around 30 to 40 seconds. You just have to take out all facing up cards, move them around to the top and you are done to perform it again. But that's been said, this is a triumph effect, very simple to do. The only secret is double back cards that hopefully most of you have already at home. If you don't, go ahead and buy yourself a pack of double back cards because you can really use them for thousands of effects. This is just one of them and probably, hopefully in your opinion too, one of the most visual effects. That's been said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and leave a subscription on Hasta His channel and also feel free to check out my channel, Country.